Thank you so much for choosing to listen to Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting. I'm Kristen Dees, the founder of Catalyst Consulting, a business consulting agency that is passionate about helping small businesses thrive. The goal of this podcast is to connect entrepreneurs with experts in a variety of industries that support small business owners in order to provide you with helpful tips, resources, and some entrepreneurship inspiration. Thanks for joining us on today's episode of Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting. My guest today is Lynn Lambrecht. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I always forget to ask before I start saying it out loud. <laughs> like, I know, but you know what? It's, it's all fine. It's yep. all good. She owns The Living Planner mm-hmm. and helps people protect their businesses from the bad things that are probably going to happen at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that's optimistic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we talk about a lot of optimistic, uh, positive things on this podcast, but we also need to talk about the realistic stuff too, because we bad do. shit happens. So <laughs> yeah. So thanks for being here. Um, tell us a little bit about you as a human being. Where are you from? I tell you, that human being side of us is, uh, it rocks. I grew up on the Iowa border of Illinois, Um, Moline, Illinois. I'm the youngest of three children. I'm definitely the oops kid in my family. My uh, brother started college when I started kindergarten and our sister was the miracle eight years after him. And I was the trailing participle five and a half years after that. College in Florida, grad school in Ohio, moved to the Bay Area and started um, my airline career. So yeah, it's just... The human being side of me, I love nature. Um, Give me nature. I've lived the crazy parts about me. I've lived in 17 places in 35 years around the world. It's uh, really been a fun adventure. It's like that wonderful patchwork quilt of life. And I've, I've seized as much of it as I can. And I continue to do so. Nice. Very cool. What's, um, what's a fun fact about you? I made a pact with myself that I was going to see a sunrise and a sunset in every continent by age 55. So before my 55th birthday, I booked my um, trip to Antarctica, which meant that I completed my seventh of seven. Oh, nice. It's something that I put on my life list um, in my 30s. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to see if I can do this deal. And it was really kind of fun. Um, Travel is part of the kind of like nature. It's the adventure and it's part of my soul. Mm -hmm. So it's fun to go experience different cultures and different lives and see what's beyond my own neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. That's uh, I love travel. It's kind of an interesting because there's always that, especially when you go somewhere new that you've never been before um, in a country where you don't speak the language and you really have no idea, customs, cultures, uh, transportation, any of that kind of stuff. uh, It feels it's so jarring to be so far and like in totality outside of your comfort zone. Like there is no, especially solo travel. Cause I think we both solo travel. So you're just like completely on your own. You have no yep. idea what the hell's going on, but then the feeling of conquering it. Oh my God. Like it's huge. Where I'm like, okay, you start to learn the little things. And I've also prefer to do longer travel. So I'll try to go somewhere for a few weeks at a time so I can kind of, you know, scope it out. But um, Acclimate a bit. yeah, when you start figuring out how food works, cause like, I feel like food is different in every country. The ordering oh my God, customs. Groceries, I love going to oh, like God. grocery stores yeah. in every <laughs> country and, yep. and, and drug stores, you know, mm-hmm. I mean like a pharmacy type pharmacy yeah. and other places. It's a fascinating gig. This mm-hmm. like, just kind of look, I don't know. It's an educational experience experience beyond school. And it really, um, that humility part, but also sometimes, okay, A, I'm going to try to figure this out. B, Mm -hmm. better ask for help. C, (laughs) oh God, (laughs) better ask for lots of help. Um, And I remember my first trip um, to Asia was uh, in 1983 and there was no English in Japan and no English in Korea and no English, I mean, where I was. And just to kind of try to get on trans- public transportation and count my way to stops oh, versus yeah. being able to rely on reading. It just, it gives you a different resilience. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's before, I mean, smartphones and like all that kind of stuff. Like you're just yeah. like out, out in the wild. I, before um, I didn't always do my smartphone and I was just like, oh, I'll just, you know, hop on Wi-Fi hotspots and stuff. But now I, I will not, especially if I'm going alone to a country that is not yeah. primarily English speaking, I will always have my smartphone on because I'm like, it's just too, it makes me too nervous to be like, I, I can't translate anything if I get stuck. Um, I yeah. can't Google map things. I can't call well, for help <laughs> way back you know 30 yeah. 40 years ago I mean, we yeah. didn't have any of that now we do I mean I remember it was such a big deal when they finally started putting a bloody ATM in an airport so oh, that we yeah. didn't have to have currency conversion prior to departure because mm-hmm. that was always a hoot so yeah. you guys 
get beyond your own neighborhood, see yeah. what's out there. And it really helps us appreciate um, what we have here. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm sorry. We went on a little little tangent there, but yeah, travel, uh, travel it up. Um, yeah. So what do you do on the work side of things? How do you provide support for business owners and entrepreneurs? You know, my, um, my life in aviation taught me a lot. And it, a lot of it came from even working airplane crashes as a volunteer. And I saw how precious life is. And I mean, when something can and like that, boom, it's one thing. It harkened me back to when I was little and we had tornadoes. Okay. We had, we had flooding. Um, I've now lived in places with earthquakes and fires and hurricanes and, and monsoons <laughs> and, you know, all the rest of it. And so we never know what we don't know. And the one thing I um, also realize is that we can, we can't control everything, but there are areas of life that we can control. And my focus is on contingency planning because I want us to be prepared at any point um, for something that may strike that we're, that's planned or unplanned. And just know that we have a safety net behind us and a team behind us and some systems behind us to understand how we could start over again, if, and when necessary. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. It's such an important thing. Um, Cause I think we were kind of chatting about this before too, is the, like, we don't like to talk about the one inevitability <laughs> in life, which is that darn dying. expiration date. We've yeah, all got yeah. one. We just don't mm -hmm. know what it is. We're like, we're just trying to ignore that it's coming. Um, but yeah, protecting yourself and your family is, is such a huge, huge thing. And, and our um, business, and, because and that's the main yeah. source of our, you know, of our revenue, but it's also, yeah, yeah. if you have teams and employees, guess what? Do we, uh, well, do we know what they're doing too? Because they mm -hmm. might have to be out for a while. I mean, it's kind of these if then statements It's like solving a puzzle in some ways. And I know I'm obnoxious because I am a proactive cheerleader and I love the strategy of it, but the tactics get me into the weeds a little bit. And maybe it's because I've been in business globally, you know, for a long, long time. I mean, over three decades. So it's mm -hmm. just something I've had a lot of um, experience and exposure. And I think that sometimes we were so busy working in the business that we forget to support the structure of what's on you know, like what is the business? So yeah, yeah. it's just really, you know, little things and big things all add up and can be a crushing blow that, you know, for us and for our employees and for our vendors and our clients and everybody that's counting on us. So what are we doing to protect ourselves? Yeah. I think we kind of chatted too about like the concept of business continuity. Like if you, especially if you're a solopreneur, but if you're the one who's primarily driving, <laughs> driving yep. the the ship, then what happens to you? Um, who has your passwords and your logins and knows how to get in, hold, in touch with your clients? So I um, am very anal retentive on that stuff, everyone. Yeah. Forgive me, but that is, you know, part of my passion project is just to make sure that someone could step in. And so I have a couple of sayings. One is how do we leave the trail of breadcrumbs? And two, how do we allow someone to step in when needed? And that goes for us at home and at work because, you know, we get disrupted in both sides of life. Yeah, yeah. How did you uh, end up where you are too? Because like I remember there was the the piece of it from um, like working airline crashes and stuff like that, and having that like oh some, we need to prepare a little bit better for this. But then how did you end up outside of your airline career into doing what you do now? Well, you know what? Um, I each time I had two international postings as an expatriate, and I was away for almost four years on each posting. And each time I came back, it was due to a parent being ill and being toward the end of their lives. So it was interesting because coming back from China was one experience, but coming back from Montreal on top of it, I mean, I don't know, by the, in my twenties, I worked two airplane crashes. Then I worked because uh, I changed countries and companies. I'd moved to China. Mom and dad both kind of had illnesses, came back. And that's when I also worked 9-11 as well as caring for dad with his Alzheimer's and making sure mom knew that she could step in and do the things that dad had already done. But when I was up in Montreal, mom started failing. And that's when I thought, okay, year four, I'm not going to let her do this one on her own. And I didn't renew my contract. And I came back and I thought, how in the world can I put all these little pieces together of yes, the business expertise, but also the ability to um, work with people during, during that awful time of saying, oh my gosh, somebody's really critically ill or they're dying or they have died. It's like, okay, hmm, how about I go be a proactive cheerleader and actually talk to people in layperson's terms as an advocate to explain what's at, what's at risk and what's to gain. And by having 
you know, a little bit of advanced planning and mm-hmm. understand, I mean, because it's kind of the continuity and the contingency is one side of it. The assess- the risk assessment is the other. And we tend to look at risk assessment like in a really narrow scope. I love to look at it broadly because it's impacting you as a personal and professional, all the people behind you, whether you have teams or VAs or independent contractors or not, um, you have vendors. So you have people that are suppliers, you have clients. So how how does everything roll and touch of what we do on autopilot that impacts them? And that's what I like to talk about because it's about people. It's about process. It's about systems. It's about access. And it's ultimately when you've made decisions, okay, who are you talking to? What's your communication strategy mm-hmm. on that deal? Yeah, because I think we were talking about that before too, that my uh, best friends and I <laughs> have had this conversation because there are emergency contacts in my phone because they don't live near my family. So if something happened yep. to me, um, they would be the ones who also know what my day-to-day life looks like and would know mm-hmm. who to contact here. Um, and so we put together kind of a like, here's our parents' names. Because like when you're an adult and you don't live by well, your parents Well, we have anymore, a phone tree. You don't it's know. Like, yeah. who's, the, who's yeah. the phone tree? Okay, so here's yeah. the family members and they get to call blank, blank, blank. Here's yeah. my, my client list, blah, 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 blah. Here's my, you know, friend list. So yeah. these friends can call these people and this friend can call these people. I mean, it's exactly, really yeah. odd to be thinking about it, but it helps when we have a structure behind it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always, I like having plans for things that always makes me feel better. So you and I um, are aligned with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, if I feel stressed or overwhelmed or anything like that, my, my default is like, how do I create a plan to get myself out of this situation all the mm. time? Hey, thanks for listening so far. I just wanted to stop and share one of my go-to CRM resources, which stands for Client Relationship Manager or Customer. Less Annoying CRM, I think their name was intentionally chosen, has been my favorite that I've been using for a while. There's lots of other great CRMs out there. I have some other ones that I refer to, but it's the one that I'm using and I like the most just because it allows for different customization options and a little bit more flexibility. It's a little bit more manual and doesn't have automated pipelines necessarily, but that's one of the things I actually like about it. So depending on what you're looking for in your CRM, Less Annoying CRM is a great one to try. If you use my link to sign up for Less Annoying CRM, you get an entire month for free on top of their already free one month trial. So you get two months for free if you use my link. I think that's plenty of time to test something out and see if it's going to work for you. They have great tutorials and guides to get you through setting up your account as well. And their customer support has always been helpful when I've needed to ask questions. The link for that is bit.ly bit.ly forward slash catalyst L-A-C-R-M. And that link will also be in the show notes. So what are the top three things you think all business owners need to know about what you do? I actually even, you you had told me, you might ask me this one. So I thought, okay, number one, life happens. Be ready. Number two, <laughs> evaluate what you do on autopilot. So that means being mindful and conscientious about truly the processes that in the way in which you're doing things. But number three, it's important to craft out the step-in plans because you know what? It's important to protect the privacy of a lot of your information, but you also need to formulate trusted partners in crime here. So especially for those of us who work by ourselves, what's the handoff plan? You know, what's, who's, who is that person? So yes, you have your buddies that you're talking about, but also from our business perspective. I mean, I've gotten to the point where my poor um, estate planning attorney just rolls his eyes because I'm like, (laughs) okay, so on the personal side, blah, 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 blah. On the, on the business side, this is where I want copyrights, trademarks, blah, blah, blah. And you just mm-hmm. like, you specify as best you can, because at the end of the day, if somebody needed to walk in, because this is about when we're living, guys, sometimes we're not at 100% capacity. I mean, it's just unfortunate, but it's true that we're not always the vibrant souls that we were born to be. And therefore, okay, cool. Somebody might need to step in and help me on a temporary basis. Um, and then somebody's going to have to clean up for me after I'm gone. So that's the part of the whole step in piece that I'm, I'm like an advocate for. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But um, also acknowledge the fact that life happens and dang it, don't keep your heads underneath those little rocks. I mean, I have the cutest family that were the ostriches. So let's avoid being in the ostrich syndrome with our heads in the sand and our little bottoms up shaking. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend for people like starting that conversation or like, you know, with their, their business partner, their life partner or whatever? How do you kind of start that process? You know, it's interesting because they kind of are similar, but also distinctly different. On the business side, business partners, honestly, number one, do you guys have a partnership agreement? 
Okay. Let's really think about that. And should something ever happen to you, have you formalized, do you have keepers and insurance? Do you have a buy-sell agreement? If, if you guys are running vibrant businesses and you're running it together, that partnership agreement is your document. It's the one that you will literally write down kind of the if-then scenarios and who takes over what when. The thing about the buy-sell agreement, I mean, I'm the geek that doesn't sell any policies. I just investigate them all. Because at the end of the day, if you have like an asset of value and something happens to you, who, if you have a spouse, is that spouse aware? Does that partner want to work with your spouse, vice versa? Do you want to work with someone's spouse or, you know, significant other? I mean, you have to think about how you're going to pass that baton and to fund it, especially when you've built something that's thriving. It, I mean, the buy-sell agreement is pretty easy. I mean, you can obtain insurance policies on one another so that at the end of the day, buy the other one out and off you run if that's how you want it. If not, then you need to be prepared to do business with the person that they are entrusting it to. So that's a very interesting conversation because you have to get into the details. So mm -hmm. I mean, if there's incapacity involved, Okay, that's one scenario. If you just plan to say, guess what? I'm going on a forever sojourn and I'm out of here. Then what's your exit plan? And if it's something where something happens quickly, then okay, well, then who is that one that has been designated in legal format that to um, be the person to take on? When it comes to loved ones and families, that's something that can be pretty delicate. I mean, I know in my family, that was probably the hardest discussion. When I was doing all my legal documents, in my 20s, my mom and dad thought I was lying to them and hiding the fact that I was dying. And I said, oh, no, no, I promise I'm not. It's just that I had already worked two crashes in my 20s. And I saw a crash when everyone died and then a crash where so everyone lived. But the person I was responsible for was my age and um, had burns over 85% of the body. So, you know, that person wasn't able to function and carry on and pay bills and do the normal day-to-day -day activities. So I thought if that were me, who could be my person, you know, who, who are my people that I would want to help me. So that is something that people do get spooked out by. And I know that that's dealing with the expiration date, but it's also dealing with something that some people are even more scared of, and that's, you know, incapacity or disability. So it's, those are unfortunately some scenarios where it happens. I mean, I would love to live a vibrant life and go to sleep one night and not wake up, but it's highly doubtful that that will happen. So when, if that doesn't happen, how do I want to be cared for? So it's about mm -hmm. us creating a roadmap. And just yeah. being open to having that conversation. And if somebody's vehemently opposed, step back. Um, because at the, you know, we, I, I used um, <clears throat> with my mom and dad, I called it Chinese water torture, where I would just have a little drip drip of, hey, dad, does mom know about blah, 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 or hey, mom, do you know about blah, 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 blah. And, you know, mm, talk to the hand. <laughs> so, and I just, you know, kind of ever so gently on, a, on an ongoing basis, I just bring a little something up. And if I saw something, I'd say, hey, do you guys know about blah, blah, blah. And I just kind of point it out. And then it, it really came to a crux for me when I was moving to China, because you know what, I was going to be 8,000 miles away. And I said, Hey, I can fly home from anywhere in the world um, in 24 hours, but I might not be able to help you the way you want me to if those permissions haven't been given, if those authorizations haven't been updated or assigned. So mm -hmm. that's when the metal, you know, it kind of like came into that time crunch and they were like, oh crap, okay, come. And so I walked around and just kind of explained everything in layperson language. Because so often we don't know. People talk in their lingo. Attorneys talk in their lingo. Financial people talk in their lingo. Insurance people talk in their lingo. So who's the real person to kind of say, hmm, how does that impact me? What does that really mean? How is yeah. that? So I'm kind of that layperson advocate who loves to dissect the what's behind all of it, but then like spill it, you know, and say, okay, this is really the impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, do you feel like it's, so who, who would people go to, or would they go to a combination of people? Would they see an estate planning attorney or a business attorney or someone like you or both or all of the above, none of the above? <laughs> it depends on how comfy you are. Cause you guys, if you're not sure where to start and just kind of want more of a straight scoop, I mean, I, I can give you a big roadmap. If you already have some understanding and knowledge, or if you're um, okay, 67% of Americans 
Americans don't even have a will yet, American adults. So you may or may not have one. And if you don't, and you're unclear as to what it is and why it is needed and what's going on, I mean, there's a bunch of us that can all talk to you. I mean, you can talk a little bit with any of the professionals that you work with. If you want a generalized view, I'm happy to share. Um, the estate planning attorneys are a place, but again, for your business, all estate planning attorneys are not savvy with intellectual property and business concerns. So there may, may be a need to have two different types, especially if you have partners and you have not done a partnership agreement, all estate planning attorneys aren't trained to do that. Um, be, be watchful as to what their specialties are in the law, because there are a variety of attorneys. And some people will say, oh yeah, I can do estate planning. Well, that might not be what they do all day, every day. And because the state and national laws are changing so rapidly, it's important that you're not just getting a cookie cutter, that you're getting things that are up to date and are tailored for you. Sure, you can do documents and stuff on your own if you want to use a third party online piece, but that might not be providing you the protection that you're hopeful that you're having, um, especially if it conflicts with some of the state laws or the state probate codes. So it's I, I'm I'm an advocate for um, giving busting the attorney's chops, but I'm also an advocate of actually working with one to tailor something just for you because mm -hmm. that's really helpful. That makes sense. What are some questions that people could ask? So like if if they're looking for someone to help them with with this particular aspect of life and otherwise. Mm -hmm. What are questions that they could ask that would help them find the right person or make sure the person knows what they're talking about? You know, your business nuances and your life nuances are yours. And you might have things that aren't part of the cookie cutter. So for blended families, it's kind of one discussion because you need to make sure that, you know, the previous, if you have, especially if you had children from a previous relationship, I mean, you need to make sure that that's earmarked. Does the estate planning attorney, how are they working with that? Um, is the estate planning attorney, I mean, how are they handling things for you with set establishing powers of attorney? How are they um, handling things for you when they are establishing your advanced care directive or your health proxy in the state of Massachusetts? See, each state has its own laws and own rules that apply at the time. So it, it's not incumbent upon you or up to you to have understanding of each of the, the laws in your state, but it's up to them. But when it comes to your your business. How are you incorporated? Are you incorporated? Are you a sole prop? Are you an LLC? Are you a C corp? Are you an S corp? If you're an S corp, are you a, a sole S corp business owner and a sole director? Because if you are and something occurs to you and you're no longer with us, guess what? When you die, the business dies. And that business is then reverted in most likely into a C-Corp and that has a completely different taxation element. So there's so many moving parts with things that it really is contingent upon what your variables are. If you own property in multiple states, that's another consideration because probate can be filed in multiple states. So it's just the protection element of you is contingent upon what you what the scope of your of, of your life and of your business, what they contain. So I don't know. I love those nuances. For me, that's the fun. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm happy to always provide generalized adv advice. And I'll get specific within that state when we're talking and just kind of talk about pros and cons and great people that you could meet with to specify your need. Your accountant could be a really helpful tool. Um, if you have a business accountant and or bookkeeper, they may also be very good sources of recommendations for you as to who they go to or who they recommend. So our a team of professionals is really helpful. And when I look at like the, the triangle, it's usually the attorney, the financial planner, and the um, accountant, the book, the book people. So that's kind of the, the grand triangle. And they're the ones that you want to make sure that they are familiar with who the other one is, and you're all communicating off the same page. If you have a complex, um, a, a, a complex dealing, and you're in multiple countries or multiple states or multiple whatever, then that's when you're going to probably throw in the tax mitigation person too, because you want to have a tax specialist to help you navigate. I think that, you know, we all pay taxes, but you know, don't overpay. <laughs> yeah. And the whole, the whole game is to play, to pay as little as you possibly can. Um, <laughs> pay, pay what's fair, um, yeah. but, but don't overpay. Yeah. 
And how does your, cause you have your, um, freebie checklist where is that a way to help start the conversation or is that just kind of like it can be it gets you okay. thinking what I've tried to do with this is I've broken down kind of our day in day out things from like home to um, kind of end of life kind of stuff and broken it into little tasks that you can start doing so that it doesn't feel so bloody overwhelming because at the end of the day, when we really think about stuff, it's like, oh my, there's a lot here. There's a whole administrative side to our life that we're, I mean, we tend to learn through experience and sometimes we learn the hard way. So it's kind of nice to start. Um, I have like a little inspirational quote. I talk about why we're doing what we're doing. And then I have like a little picture with a little checklist of a few items that you can start on. And then 30 days later, you're going to get another one. And 30 days after that, you get another one. So we, t I mean, it's a 12 month kind of rolling to do things okay. get you started yeah Thank that you. makes sense because I feel like that's nice to have I'm a I'm a checklist person so a lot of my freebies are also checklists because I'm like it helps that's what I do is that again it's the structure it's the processes like creating ways to help make sense of the madness essentially well, and chunk it down <laughs> so, and the yeah, freebie yeah. is about your personal life it's not about your business um okay. I'm, put, I'm putting together a contingency roadmap thing that I'm going to be offering soon too that will be a course that's over a series of weeks that's going to do like the same chunking down but for now this this little guy he's just for home and it's important because guess what without you there is no business mm -hmm. so you got to take care of you too yeah no that makes sense so I feel like the basically be able to ask the specific questions about what your life is and your business and the things that you have that you might need to be concerned about. So like you were saying, the blended family situation, having business partners, if you do or don't, um, if and you're then maybe a single finding other, if you're a yeah. single parent, oh yeah, you know, if you're flying solo, you know, mm -hmm. we have a whole, we have, and there's very different life stages and very different play, ways that we all are interacting. So therefore each each one of those situations, that's you. That's your, is, is, we're as unique as little snowflakes out there. So yeah. that piece of it, honestly, sometimes you don't know what you don't know and you don't know where to start. And that's, that's kind of where I come in too, because I'm happy to like go probing and just kind of say, okay, let's let her, let's see where we are here. And are you ready for this? And what about this? And what about this? And if you thought about that, and because da, 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 that's my curious George side mm -hmm. or Georgette. Georgia. Yeah. Georgina. Thanks for listening so far. I just wanted to stop and share one of my go-to Pinterest schedulers. They also schedule for Instagram, but it's tough to find good Pinterest scheduling programs. So Tailwind is my go-to choice for that. It's super easy to set up. You can repin tons of content. You can schedule repins. You can recycle and shuffle around your own content that you've already posted. Super helpful. You can schedule out tons of stuff. Pinterest user as a way to market your business. It's a super helpful resource. It takes a lot of the manual steps out of everything. And like I said, it also has the added benefit of scheduling things on Instagram for you too. If you're interested in checking that out, the link for that is tailwind.sjv.io forward slash catalyst. And the link for that will be in the show notes because that's too many weird letters all at once. Where does the information go? So like if you do all this stuff, like how do people know where it is if something happens? They get to determine what they want. I have a couple of ways that I do mine. Um, and I start off with this huge binder with individual sheets and, you know, have like my, all my IDs and all my copies, front page copies of my utility bills and my grant deed. And, you know, I mean, I do it from a home perspective. And then I also do it from a work perspective, because at the end of the day, when we're closing out or stepping in, guess what? Somebody needs to have access to that information. And it's not just, hi, here's a, here's here. Um, you might not even have the full account number on something. Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of important when you maybe for me, it's easier for me to take a peek every year when I'm processing stuff for my taxes. And it's like, okay, what's changed? Okay. What policies are different? Okay. Do I have any accounts that are different? Okay. Do I have this? It's different. And the same with, you know, like keeping up with your passwords and stuff. I have a fireproof safe at home. Um, it's one, I keep it, I keep a smaller one so I can lift it up and take it in the car in case of fire or evacuation. Um, it's also, I have backup places and like protected cloud and um, alternate like hard drives and different things. So I'm kind of a plan A, B and C person just because. I lived in China and had the 9,600 baud rate and used to watch the brownouts and do whatever and have to push back a 747 airplane. So yeah, um, do what's comfy for you and something that is in within your wheelhouse. 
be comfortable with it because at the end of the day, this is a system and for, for you, but the individual little things that you are starting to do, you can do it in document form. You can, you know, print things out. You can store it. It's up to you. But just protect it. Okay. That makes sense. So somebody, when they start digging into all your stuff is going to be, is going to find it somewhere. Basically. My poor powers of attorney are horrified because I of course have my binders and in the, I have a cover letter on it. And I've of course told them, please don't, don't, if I'm not here 45 minutes to an hour, an hour a day max, or else you're going to be completely goofy, you know, feeling pretty goofy. <laughs> um, Cause you know, it's hard. It's emotional work when we're like closing stuff out for people we care about. So um, it just, it makes it easier. And I have like little tabs of this is personal, this is business, and you know, this is legal, and this is real estate, and this is this, and this is that. So, I mean, just try to use the system that works for you that you can keep updated. Because I am so sorry to report this is not once and done, this is ongoing follow up. Um, and it doesn't, from a legal perspective, it doesn't have to be often, it can be at a trigger event. Um, maybe you have children, maybe you don't, maybe you're divorced, maybe you're married, maybe you're this, maybe you're that. So when major things happen, that's when we tend to update. But it's also every three to five years, I check in with my attorney and just say, hey, the state and national laws change, do I need to update? Because sometimes there are different provisions that come into play that kind of can catch us off guard, kind of like with just even our, our retirement planning now with the SECURE Act and inheriting an IRA is completely different today than it was 30 years ago. So keep, I mean, it's a, it's kind of that part of that. You can grumble just like you do with your taxes, but please just kind of keep things going. I wish it were once and done. It's not. Yeah. Having something is better than having nothing though. Because you uh, don't, yeah. because when you have nothing, the court decides for you. And at the end of the day, I don't want a court deciding for me. I want me deciding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or something, you know, people making medical decisions for you and that kind of stuff too is like, that stuff and can the, get complicated. And the one piece of the medical decision, let me encourage one personal personal piece. Everybody might not agree with the decisions that you make, okay? And that part is some, it can cause a lot of friction um, when the rubber meets the road. And I will tell you that it, the most more clarity you can give and the stronger your communication can be, that's one piece of it. The second is who you choose to speak for you if and when needed as a power of attorney when you're living is you make sure that person has a bit of a spine because it's also that person is then being you when you can't be fully you. And if people start sniping at them and they cave, then your wishes won't be honored. Mm -hmm. That's a really good point. Like sometimes it's not necessarily the person you think it is like you need it to be. It's an the interesting person who will advocate for you, but that's not always all, the person that's closest. Times, yeah. But it's also really an emotional time. And so, I mean, I have a lot of heart for that, but at the end of the day, and when I have been in that role and I've had to say, no, this is what I wanted and I'm here to respect their wishes, then, you know, that's, I feel like that's my, that was my job. And yeah. I wasn't always popular. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Because people are crazy it's, when well, stuff like emotional. that happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yep. emotional. And I get that. Yep. But, yeah. you know, I mean, so make sure somebody's strong enough to be, to really be your, your voice when mm -hmm. you can't, when you can't speak it. Yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> and just reflect on your life currently and be like, do I have this person? <laughs> Cause if not, you need to find one <laughs> for well, sure. And have a couple because we all yeah. need a backup to the backup. And I think what I've seen with a lot of um, couples that I've worked with younger couples, they have each other and that's wonderful. But if something were to ever occur to both, then what? Mm -hmm. And you have either pets or children that you're leaving behind, then what? So yeah. always, I mean, if you can get, I mean, think about it from like that whole, okay, hold on. Who's my backup for the backup? And I know I sound like a broken record, but that's the piece of the step in of backup to the backup, backup to the backup and refresh it often because it may not be, you know, where you are today. It may be mm -hmm. where you were when you decided. And for people that have blended in family, make sure that that first person is no longer the beneficiary or the decision maker and make it a current day person. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Are so, you overwhelmed yet? I'm not. No, it was great. Um, okay, good. Um, so as an entrepreneur and business owner yourself, what advice would you give fellow business owners when it comes to running their businesses? Realize that we all have blind spots. 
Mm. And you know what? There are certain strengths that we all have, and that's wonderful. But get help for the st- things that you don't know. Um, and uh, don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to seek help. There are free resources available through different workforce um, initiatives, like in your state and in your county. There's the whole score thing if you need it. Just make sure that you're not running blind because we can be pretty, you know, oh, I'm really smart. I've been a lot of places. But I mean, I was the first person to go out and have people take a look and tell me what I was missing. And there are areas that a lot of times aren't our strong suits. And so guess what? Play to your strengths and get help when you don't, when it's not your strength. Mm -hmm. No, it's great. Yeah. Score is a good resource for that. Um, The SBDC is also another one. Um, I think they're fairly equivalent as far as how many branches they have and all that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, that's a big, it's a big call out. Um, What about other... Do you do like networking? Like, do you find like other like mentorship arrangements or things like that too? Or do you prefer like that kind of thing where it's like a, here, let me give you my business plan and tell me, tell me what's wrong with it. <laughs> well, and I, I will tell you, I mean, I, I'm in a, an accountability circle and it's with other professionals and we're in, in different industries and um, we get together a lot and just talk because honestly, at the, at the end of the day, even though what we're doing is different, the way we serve is similar. And so when you are there to like really care for a client and a customer base, um, you might have different social media posts or whatever, or marketing but in some areas you may or may not know about it or the technology. Guess what? I am very relational and I like um, technology also. Technology is an enhancement for me. It is not a replacement. So I, you know, I want to stay hip and current on that kind of stuff. And we need to have other people that are in our world um, on a pretty regular basis that we know, like, and trust that we can bounce ideas off of. So I do it formally and informally, um, but I'm also, I'm a mentor. Um, I'm a mentor for a nonprofit um, working with the military people that are kind of coming back considering coming into the private sector. So I'm I'm the one that's like looking at what they had done in the military sector and saying, okay, we've got some transferability in the private sector into blank, 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 and blank. So I think um, giving and and getting, giving and getting is a part of, you know, all of us learning and growing because we learn things from more people that we, that we're communicating with and talking to Mm -hmm. and actually like having, sharing, sharing experiences with, I think it's really important. Solopreneurs, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, uh, like you said, the mixture is nice too, because sometimes you don't realize how much you know until you're trying to teach somebody else what you know. Um, I used to run into that with, you know, in leadership when I had teams of people and we get somebody new and we had somebody that was previously the newest person on the team. So they always felt like they didn't know anything. And then when they started teaching somebody else, they're like, oh, okay, I do. I do know know the answers to these questions. I know. Um, And I used to love putting my teams together in um, groups of three so that Mm -hmm. they had a backup to the backup and they could like cross pollinate because you know what we all play to our strengths and so Mm -hmm. teaming up with somebody that you know my strength is not theirs I love it because they have strengths that I don't have and then we get to feed and and grow with each other so I think that piece is really important for us yeah yep I agree um what resources or maybe programs or processes or something like that do you wish that you had known about at the beginning of your entrepreneurship journey (sighs) I think The technology piece, it keeps it changing so dang much that um, in some ways, I wish there could have been a more clear roadmap as to, okay, hold on. What are the pieces in enhance? What are the pieces where I can convert a PDF or I can do this? I mean, it's, some of it's the basic stuff. It's really fascinating to me. Um, I mean, now seeing and using Canva is different than it was, you know, back then. And, you know, seeing and using, knowing that LinkedIn's there and actually the uh, ongoing evolving of videos and all of that. I had no clue. I mean, I, I marketing, yes, I had been involved with it in aviation, but I had never done it for like me. Um, And I didn't know how the best way, especially since I play in all 50 states and DC and stuff is like, hmm, hmm, everything's so specific to that state that I thought, Lynn, hold on, there's commonality. And so I finally have gotten to that place where it's like, okay, crap, there is commonality. Think about (laughs) the commonality. So yeah, it's just, it's sometimes our own head um, and the woogies and the barriers we are putting on ourselves. That's kind of the biggest, that's one of the bigger hurdles to cross over and get some, 
that getting the help even from my accountant um, and, you know, just really kind of having people on your team, having someone on the website back end, rather than me thinking I had to do all of it myself or having help with, you know, doing different pieces. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really good at that at the very beginning. I thought I should just be doing it all myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, same. Um, <laughs> for sure. Um, I do tell a story though. I was like the very first thing that I ever outsourced was bookkeeping. I was like, <laughs> it's like gone. I'm out. Yeah. Um, website I, was mine. Website was mine. Yeah. I can, I can do websites well enough. Um, cause I've I done can so too, many. And I'll do, just, I'll do all my updates yeah, and stuff now, I just but don't. that whole building of it, it was like, oh my God, I was trying to build it's it rough. from the ground up. And I was like, oh, oh yeah. crap, off you go. And that, that was like, okay. Yeah. Like yeah. I do have a website VA now that she's great. Cause I've moved my website back and forth a couple of times across different platforms. I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is, I would have lost my marbles. Yeah. Okay, cool. So how can we support you? How can we stalk you on the internet? What are you, <laughs> what are you working on? <laughs> you know what? You can stalk me wherever you'd like. Um, I, <laughs> I have, um, I'm active on LinkedIn. I do have a Facebook business page. Um, I have an Instagram business page. I have Twitter. Um, I have, you know, definitely the contact me even on my own website or on the courses website because I'm putting together during the pandemic. I've been loading all my information onto an online platform so that, hey, if something happens to me, there's one easy place for people to get it. And, you know, I'm doing some like DIY class, you know, the kind of coursework that people have. But um, I think you have my addresses so we can Mm-hmm. Post those. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They'll but go on the always. The you can always email me at lynn at the living and um, you know what? Just know that you've got like somebody that's going to be the layperson advocate to kind of give you a straight scoop. That's good. Everybody needs a Lynn. <laughs> um, perfect. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. I greatly appreciate it. I love this is one of my favorite things about podcasting. I always learn things. And um, sometimes I feel like I'm just cheating the system because I'm like, come on my podcast and, t- <laughs> and no, I'll learn things from you. But it's, it's great. You guys, it. this is where we get to say thank you to Kristen because what she's doing with her podcast and all of her materials that she's providing is saying, all right, hold on. I'm going to be a catalyst for you to have growth and success in your business. And so, Kristen, Kristen, bravo. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I try. <laughs> you um, do well. Thanks. Um, perfect. Well, then, yeah, this episode will be coming out shortly. But other than that, we will see you guys on the next one. Be well, everybody. Thanks so much for listening today. This was a great episode, and I'm sure you will appreciate the tips and insights from today. If you want to connect further with our guests, you can find the contact information, social media links, etc., any of the freebies in the show notes from today's episode. Please show some love to our guests and like, follow, and subscribe their content if you connected with them. And also don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe Building Better Businesses with Catalyst Consulting. Also, if you drop a juicy review, that's always cool too.